channel if you're new welcome 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 for the first time we'll be here to run for a long time yeah okay so you guys read that title below yes yeah, so today's video i'm going to be actually talking about why i left lsu yeah so this is gonna be a real interesting video if you want to know the reasons why i decided to leave lsu keep watching so i actually graduated from high school in 2017 i decided to go and attend louisiana state university which is located in baton rouge louisiana just in case some of you guys didn't know but yeah let's just kind of just so from the beginning as to why I decided to leave. First reason why I decided to leave is because of distance. Quick little side note, I actually committed to the school before I even went and visited the college. It was the only college acceptance that I was actually like excited about getting into school. So me and my parents talked about it. My dad was like, if you want to do this, then like we'll let you do this. So that's where I ended up going. I actually, the first time I ever saw the school was when I went for my orientation, which was in June. That is the most, if you like could sit here and picture like the epitome of what a college campus looks like, it's probably gonna be LSU. That campus is just immaculate. Like that is such a beautiful campus. If you're ever like in Baton Rouge, definitely go and like just tour and walk around the campus. So we actually decided to drive into Louisiana to go and move me in. Just to like give you guys a better idea how far it was, the drive from North Jersey to Baton Rouge, Louisiana was 21 hours. <laughs> yes, so me and my parents spent 21 hours in a car moving all my stuff down so I could be ready for school. Just to let you guys know, I'm one of those people where I really don't mind being far away from home. So like when I say distance, I'm not really so much talking about like me being homesick. I've been out of the country on a different continent without my parents before. Like I went to Europe for 12 days. My parents were not with me. Like it was fine. Like I've never was bothered by the distance. I actually kind of knew in my heart that I didn't want to like go to school in Jersey. I was like, no, like let me get out of here. Like let me go experience something new. So I went all the way to Louisiana. <laughs> so when I'm talking about distance, I meant so much as me going home for breaks or like just in case I need to go home to take care of business. So for example, I would either have to drive an hour to take one flight out of New Orleans, or if I flew out from Baton Rouge, I would have to take two flights, whether I have a connecting in, whether it be Charlotte, Atlanta, Miami, Houston, and then I would have to take another flight just to get back to New Jersey. That actually did become a lot for me and my parents to handle because a lot of stuff occurred where I actually ended up having to come home every month my whole first year at LSU. So it was definitely a lot. And like, I just kind of was just like, yeah, I don't really know if this is like really worth me like doing all this flying, like paying extra money to get on these flights to go to school. And like, when I do have to come home for certain things because it was just like, it was a lot. So that was like really like definitely distance and paying for flights was definitely like one of the big reasons as to why I probably did leave school. Okay, the second reason as to why I left LSU was because of being in a new environment. Like I said, I'm real outgoing. It's not really hard for me to meet people and stuff, but I am a city girl. <laughs> I am from the city, like suburbia city, but still like, I like noise around me, tall buildings. Like I have a lot of concrete jungle around me. That's where I'm by, okay? <laughs> so I decided to go to the South in the country to go to school. I am not country at all like but when I tell you just me going to Louisiana was such a crazy culture shock for me like just seeing how people like move or act down there it was just one of those things where like I really had to like take it all in at one time I was just like oh my god like what am I doing here so yeah when I went to Louisiana I did not know a single soul down there I didn't have any family from Louisiana not any friends so I really just went down there by myself and decided to try something new but you know, sometimes things just don't work out. I mean, Louisiana was cool and stuff, but that definitely is not like somewhere where I could probably picture myself like living or whatever, but yeah. I was just in a whole new region. Like I was in a different time zone. I was an hour behind everyone I knew at home in Jersey. So it was definitely just like a lot to take in all at one time. So that's another reason why. The third reason why I left LSU is because of being a number at my school. So. When I tell you Louisiana State University is a huge school, let me just kind of give you guys some examples of things that I dealt with on a daily. My 
gym, which was called the U Re University Recreation Center. Um, from where I lived, it was a 25, 30 minute walk. Yeah, that's to go to the gym. So if I decide to walk, I will walk 30 minutes and then have to walk 30 minutes back to my dorm. Another example, I took five classes my first semester at Bergen College. I was a mass communications major at LSU also, and I had a concentration in public relations. Two of my classes I had with 400 students. <laughs> One of my classes I had with 600 students. So out of my five classes, three of them had hundreds of kids in it. When things like that happens, it kind of makes you just think like, you're not gonna really get that good, good relationship with a teacher unless you truthfully do put yourself out there. Like one of my classes, I had like ATAs. Those are people that we would talk to. We had issues. We never really directly spoke with our teachers. So it's just like, I just felt like there wasn't a good enough connection that students can make with their teachers for them to have like better understandings when it came to assignments or like tests or homework. Oh, here's another example of why I'm talking about how big my school is my school had a testing center so i know some schools have testing centers also but this is one of those tests where like during finals usually your teacher when they sign you a test you will book what time you want to take it you were able to schedule your test as early as 8 a.m and as late as 10 p.m at night so you would pick a time so let's say you pick like 8 30. no let's say you pick like 3 30 to take a test they give you a 15 minute grace period after the 8 30 for you to like take your test only because there would be a line when I tell you guys that line, you will probably be waiting in that line for 30 minutes sometimes. So it's just like, you have to think about things like you're risking the chance of you like failing your test because you have to wait in line because other people have to take tests too, which is kind of like, I feel like that system isn't really that fair for people because if I got there 15 minutes early, it's like, and I have to like wait an additional 15 minutes because of other people in this line. like. That's not my problem. We all got to take tests at the same time. So it's like they should have accommodated people a little bit more differently. I felt like whenever I try to go and like talk to my teachers or advisors, I just feel like they kind of just were just pushing me through like just to get to the next person. I feel like no one was actually like trying to sit down, like really help me like figure out my college career and like stuff that I want to do after I get to college. So that's why I just kind of felt like if you can't really just sit here and like give me like the little bit of attention that I did need, it kind of just made me feel like, well, why am I really here then? Because I'm not really getting like the whole student, teacher, you trying to help me push me and teach me life lessons here at this school. All right, the fourth reason why I left LSU is because of student accountability and being a student advocate. So my first semester at LSU, I got into some trouble. So yes, I got put on probation for an entire academic school year. So basically my, I'm not gonna go into too much details about what occurred, but basically, my teacher didn't have the heart to come and speak to me about something, but instead she decided to just turn my paper in for plagiarism. She did not come and talk to me about it. She did not come and ask me because I did good in her class the whole semester. Like, I never, like, really did any, like, any bad work. She was, like, she liked the things I'd be writing about. And then the one paper where there became an issue, she decided to just flat turn my paper and not even speak to me about it. If you have a student and you know they do good work and they usually like are not like half assing your class, why wouldn't you think to come and like maybe ask them like, hey, did something happen or was there a situation as to why your paper came this way? Which there was a situation I actually broke out in hives, so I was not able to like really hand in my best best work and like things just kind of happened. It wasn't intentional like i did not just sit here and copy paste papers like no i just did not go back and like double check my work the best i could because i was sick for an entire week like i was breaking out of highs i have bumps all over my body like i looked a hot mess so my teacher ended up giving me a zero for my grade i went to her after class i was like hey i saw you gave me a zero on i think it was like, my final or i don't know if it was my final day it was my third essay for like the year because it had a lot of weight on my grade I was like, hey, like I saw you gave me a zero. Like, can I ask you why? Yeah, Janae, I just wanted to let you know that I turned your paper in for plagiarism. First thing, the only reason why I found out about this is because I went out of my way and asked her why I had a zero for an assignment. I would have never found out about this until I got the official email from the student accountability office about my charges I was going to receive. So I talked to my teacher. I said, well, could you at least talk, tell me about it before you just turned it in? 
she was just like no like, i can no longer further discuss this with you like this is out of my hands like i have nothing to do with this anymore so it's kind of like well you didn't even give me the heads up that i was about to like have to deal with all this and like go on trial and all these crazy things that already had rubbed me the wrong way in general okay. i didn't make an appointment at student accountability student advocate office so student advocate right y'all hear that word student advocate that means that it's someone who is supposed to be advocating for me and the good things that I do. That's what's supposed to be occurring. When you advocate for someone, it's because you're trying to like basically big them up for clearly someone else. Like being a student advocate. So I ended up having this meeting with this lady. I told her what happened. I brought in my doctor's papers, my doctor's notes, all this stuff. I really had like all the proof that I need since we want to say trial charges i'll say proof i only had all the proof that i needed to show how it was just like an honest mistake like it wasn't like anything cruel or like i really was just trying to just get one over on my teacher basically my student advocate advisor that i went to speak with it was kind of like the whole time i was talking trying to explain my case she already had her mind made up i felt as though I basically went and tried to like plead my case just for her to be like well no you have to accept these charges anyway which is the words that they tell you she really said to me well Janae I understand that you were sick but this doesn't make it okay for you to done what you had did even though it was an accident she basically said like well you're gonna have to accept these charges if you don't want to accept it then you could just go on over up to the head and trial board and at that point it just makes you feel like well if you don't want to hear me out then why would I try to go and to trial with all these other people who I feel like are just not going to want to hear me out either? I came to you because you're supposed to be understanding and you're supposed to see what my situation was. But instead, you already had your mind up and you wanted to make me accept the charges of plagiarism. Like, no, that isn't okay. It would have been one thing about a student who was constantly getting in trouble and constantly was like in the student advocate office. But that isn't something that I was doing. Like, I wasn't a bad kid. I got my work done. I went to classes. I mean, like, I did what I need to do to be in school, but instead you decide, no, we're not gonna like really try to help this girl. I'm gonna just make her get the charges. So I had a, if I was still at LSU, I would have spent my entire December, 2018 to December, 2019 being on probation. That's what occurred, but yes. So that was a real big, big reason as to why I decided to leave. But just the fact of her not even like, trying to be a little bit understanding of my situation, how I was sick and like, just things just did not get handled in the best way, just kind of like really, really rubbed me the wrong way, which is something that like, still like, it's kind of like shocking to me to this day. Cause just like, you were supposed to be my student advocate, but instead you decided to already like, basically make up your mind that I'm going to be taking these charges anyway. But yeah, that was my big, big thing. And I just want to clarify, like, I don't want to sit here and be like, these five reasons are the reasons why you shouldn't go to this school. I'm just speaking from my experience. I personally did not have the greatest experience. I mean, besides like all the friends and people that I met, which I still talk to to this day and I miss them very, very much. Like I'm probably gonna plan a trip to go there in the fall to see them. But it's just like over a certain amount of time, if things just keep constantly, constantly happening, like just negative things, I'm gonna I'm gonna be like, all right, well clearly like this ain't where I'm supposed to be. This ain't for me. So I'm gonna just step out, which I just made a second decision to do that. I went back for one week for my sophomore year. I wasn't feeling it anymore. I was just like, I can't do this. So I was like, I left. Left, took my gap year. Now I'm at Delaware State University and I couldn't be happier, honestly. But yeah, LSU was definitely like, it was a big eye opener for me. Just like the whole experience in general and like all like the trial and tribulations that I had to face being at that school. But yeah, it was definitely like just something for the books, which I mean, I'm definitely grateful for that experience just because if I would never went to LSU, I probably wouldn't be where I am today, which is like, I'm very, very grateful for. And like, I love where I am at this point in my life today. But yeah, that was just, ooh, that was just a trip for me. It was a whole year experience for Nate that I will never ever forget about. But yeah, that was definitely just, those are my reasons why I left LSU, basically. Just a little bit in a nutshell. I mean, like, some of them is just like, it just got to the point where just the build of the build of build up i'm just like yeah i gotta go but yeah you guys thank you for tuning into this video for this week if you're new make sure you go ahead and subscribe to my channel get this video a big thumbs up and if you want to know more about my videos and when i post don't forget to click on that bell button but i love you guys thank you for tuning in i'll see you next week bye yeah yeah uh.